Hi everyone, today I'm going to be giving you a tour of my Notion and giving you all the deets on how I use Notion to achieve pretty much all of my goals. I don't say all because there were some travel goals I couldn't get to last year because of lockdown and yada yada yada, but you get the point. Before using Notion, I had a lot of goals that I made virtually no progress on. I always wanted to do something with my photography, I wanted to do pottery classes, I wanted to do so many things, and I would keep putting things off. Using Notion and having that system in place has helped me just become more disciplined and therefore happier because I'm doing a lot of the things that I want to do. This is by no means saying like you shouldn't use notion in exactly this way. I use it this way because it works for me and I think a great way to approach it is to watch this video, take from it what you think will work for you, tweak things along the way, and never be afraid to switch things up. But anyway, that's kind of the gist on why I'm absolutely obsessed with notion. I'm sure all of you know what notion is, but if you're unfamiliar, I'll leave a link in the description so you can get more information. By the way, this video is not at all sponsored. This is just my opinion and I'm not getting paid anything to say this. If you're new here, my name is Marcella. I'm a software engineer based in Los Angeles. And speaking of Los Angeles, the weather is crazy here today. It was hailing earlier and now it's super cloudy and the clouds are shifting over the sun. So it gets to be very sunny and very cloudy and you're, we're just gonna have to deal with it because I have a road trip this weekend and I have to film today. So anyway, let's just get into it. So when I open my Notion, the first thing I land on is my to-dos page. And I guess I label this to-dos, but it's basically just like my daily landing point. I love adding covers to my Notions just because it, it adds some ambiance to the page in my opinion. I have a little icon for each of my pages because I think it adds some character and I love when things are visually appealing. So the first thing that I have under every day, it's things I want to remember to do almost every day. And here I just have journal, do my one second a day. So I use um, a one second a day app and I record exactly what it says one second each day. I've done it every year since my senior year of college and it's really awesome. I totally would recommend it. And then I have read something because for a while I was pretty bad at reading stuff but now I don't really need that reminder. And then I have my call family reminder. I just like to remember to call my parents. But yeah, those are my everyday reminders. I like looking at that and being like, oh, I should read or I should remember to do my one second a day today and stuff like that. Underneath that, I have a two column view for four different categories. The first one is this to do and I labeled it backlog just because I use this to do to keep track of things I want to get done. It's nothing that I need to get done right away because if you watch my other video I do keep like a small little notepad of a bunch of lists of to do's each day. I like to refer back to this list of things that I need to do but aren't important to do today. On this list, I have things like download photos from the Fuji app and delete them. Let me know if you use that app. I used to love the Fuji app, but I need to download all those photos and just delete the app because I don't use it anymore. Or find a hair salon, things that I don't need to do right now, but I should get to eventually. And then next to that, I have this thing of reminders. That's pretty self-explanatory. Some stuff that I should remember. Underneath that, I have a shopping list. I have this little caption that says, things I should buy soon. These are just mainly things that I wanna order, but don't have the time to to figure out what the best one is or maybe I want to think about ordering it or whatever like I just list things here when I don't have time to buy them and then I'll eventually get to ordering them like for example a Polaroid camera I want but I don't know if I should get slash need so I haven't bought it yet and the one thing that I find really helpful on this page is actually this packages en route slash online shopping column I'm a big online shopper I think we all are nowadays and here I just list any packages that I've ordered and I'm expecting to get in and this is really helpful especially because nowadays there's a lot of delays so I like to keep track of what I ordered and make sure that I get it. That's my main landing page. Love the way that this looks. You could tell I love pink so I use pink everywhere. The main purpose of this page is just to be like a little catch-all page. The next set of pages are under my goals section of Notion. This is the one super important section for me. So under my goals, the first page I have is a North Star page. This is concept of you should have a North Star. These are the principles that should be guiding your decision making and your life choices. One of the habits from the book of seven habits of highly successful people was to begin with the end in mind and this North Star page really embodies that. Beginning with the end in mind allows you to maintain a good frame of reference when evaluating your daily life and also your successes. And for my North Star page, I split it up into four different categories. My family, my career, my personal goals, as well as my love and relationship goals. And I do recommend the book. It's a pretty easy read and it does a really good job of explaining why concepts like this are important. My next page I have here is a three-year plan. To be honest, one night, exactly December 8th, 2020 at 4.59, 
9 p.m. So I guess it actually was just in the middle of the day. I just felt like life was a lot and I wanted to figure out where I was going to in the immediate future. So I actually just wrote this blurb. I don't recommend having like a very strict plan for life because you don't know what life will throw your way and what opportunities will come, what doors will be opened. But I just wanted to vent that day. So I wrote a bunch of things here that I wanted to get off my chest. It's not really a three year plan, but it's just like from December 8th, 2020, this is what I wanted my next three years to be like. Whether it will be like this or better or worse, we'll see. But that was just, I needed to get that off my chest. And it's nice to look back and evaluate whether these goals are still important to me. Speaking of my goals, the next two entries I had were my 2020 goals and my 2021 goals. They basically just contain my New Year's resolutions or whatever you want to call them. Just things I want to do within this year. I have 13 things on this page, but some of them are really simple. Like learn three new yoga poses, do my one minute a day each day, or like aim for 80% hit rate on my one second a day. I mentioned in my last video, but an important thing I do with these goals is I have my personal journal. Each month I look at my goals for the year and I make an entry in my journal for each month. What things can I do in March that will move me closer to getting some of these goals accomplished? If my goal is to read 20 to 30 books for this year. I'll want to read two books in March so I'll write that in my journal. This really helps you stay accountable. It gives you 12 opportunities to reflect on your goals and figure out how to make them happen. And I really recommend that. In addition to doing that, I do a quarterly update. So I got this idea just from how corporations are run. I do a quarterly check-in on all my goals. And this sounds kind of nuts, but every quarter I track whether I've started that goal, I'm in progress of finishing it, I've completed it. And that gives you a really good visual of where you're at within the year. And I took this idea just from big corporations. I always do quarterly earnings calls and I was like, I should check in on myself every quarter and make sure I'm doing what I want to do, you know? So I highly recommend that as well. That in addition to the journaling that I do, I would say that's been a game changer for me. So this is the most important part of the video. Moving on, we have my continuous learning slash thoughts page. This is kind of like a journaling page, I would say. I just wanted a place where I could keep a series of random thoughts, just different journal entries that I was too lazy to actually write out physically and I wanted to add more detail to. It's faster to type. The guy on the roof next to my building is staring at me and it's like, what is this gal doing? But we're gonna keep going. And the next thing I have is this ideas section. I'm not gonna share with you what's under there. It's just a random collection of pages of ideas I have for companies I wanna start or things I wanna do in the future. So underneath that, I have my YouTube section. The milestone and ideas pages are pretty basic. The cool page here is I have this YouTube videos board. I have like a card for each video idea that I'm currently making or gonna be making very soon within the next few weeks. I have a few different columns. There's a script column where I work on flushing out the idea, a film column where I need to film it, edit column, and then a done column. Each of these cards is actually a template, so I'm able to generate them really easily when I wanna create one. And in that car in that template, um, I have a few different categories, like the goal of the video, a script, any filming notes, any editing notes, Notion, you could do multiple views. So I have a board view of just to see what I'm currently working on. But then there's also a calendar view that I use to actually schedule out my videos. So in the calendar view, you can see like, oh, I'm going to upload my weekend in my life on March 8th, or oh, I'm going to upload my Notion tour video on March 15th. This is really helpful for me to know what videos I want to do and when I should film them in order to have them ready. The next section I have is my fitness section. And here I have two main things. There's my workout tracker and then there's my measurements. I'm not going to be sharing with you my exact measurements, but I'll share with you the table that I use to track them. The simple table, I just log the date, the time, as well as the measurements. So I track my weight, my measurements in inches around different parts of my body, and then I note whether I took progress photos that day or not, or when you're working out. It's really easy to get lost in just looking at the scale and feeling like you didn't make any progress, but the measurements tell a more holistic view. And then my workout tracker page is another thing I'm super proud of. I had to recently restart this one because I stopped using it in late 2020 because I wasn't doing a really consistent workout schedule. I've been using it again for the last three weeks. So basically I title it what portion of the body I targeted that day or what workout I did that day. For example, Let's see, I, like this this entry, I did my legs on February 23rd. And I listed all the workouts I did. It's really motivating to see like, oh, I've been working out four to five times each week for like the past four weeks. I should keep doing it. The next thing I have, which I love to cook, I have this recipes page and it's just a table that contains recipes and links to blogs that I use as well as any note changes I made to the recipe. I get stuck in a rut and only make the same things for like a few weeks in a row and I want to switch it up. Every time I find a good recipe, I link 
blanket here. Some of my favorites are my Cuban beef picadillo, my loca moco, my paella. So this is just a baby table, which I'm hoping to fill out with more new intricate recipes in the future. Next thing I use is my books page. Here I just track what books I've read and um, whether I like them, whether I should reread them. Um, and I track some notes or some summaries on the books as well. If I really want to solidify takeaways from a book in my own brain, I need to like take some notes kind of like old school back in class style on the book just so that it kind of solidifies in my own brain some of the key takeaways of the book. For example, I read When Breath Becomes Air back in July 2019 and I wrote down my thoughts on the book as well as some key takeaways. And I do this for a few books that I find really helpful. Moving on, I have this travel section. I don't have a lot because this only started February of 2020 and then obviously March 2020 is when the USA locked down. I actually planned a Hawaii trip for February and that, I snuck that in right before we knew things were going to lock down and impeccable timing on that. But for example, I just listed our flight reservations where we're picking up the rental car. I didn't plan things super specifically, but I wrote down a bunch of things that if I if we wanted to do that day, the, that, those were the details and that's where you could find out how to do that. And that was really helpful. I think with vacations, I always like to play it by ear rather than be super strict because then it's not as fun. Sometimes things need planning. Like, for example, we had to drive really far to go to a zip lining place because the one near us was booked. But anyway, the last thing I have is just an archive page. I'm pretty much a hoarder and I don't want to delete these pages that I'm no longer using. So I keep them under this archive. Couldn't tell you why I put a toilet paper emoji for this archive section. But here I just have pages that I'm no longer using, but I'm too attached to to actually delete from my notion. So yeah, that's kind of it for my Notion tour. Oh, I'm almost out of coffee. I think my biggest tip when it comes to Notion is to take it easy, do it page by page. I really only started with my to do's page and my goals page, and then everything just started expanding as I like wanted to track it or wanted to have some inkling of like what recipes I like or what books I read and stuff like that. So don't overwhelm yourself and feel like you need to go out and do all these things right away. I think it's important to take it easy, see what suits you, see what you want to track for yourself. A lot of these pages also went through various iterations. Like don't at all feel like you need to have the perfect setup right away. You can always change things. And that's my favorite thing about Notion. It's so easy to change things. The one downside with Notion is I don't like its tables for actually doing numbers or accounting. So I don't keep any of my financial information or my financial tracking slash budgeting on it. I do that separately in an actual spreadsheet. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.